Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt Farm and Garden. My name is Summer and today I'll be giving you a monthly tour of our food forest and all of our fruit trees that we have on our property along with all of our wild fruiting bushes and trees. This year it's my goal to give you a monthly tour of not only my garden but what we have growing on our entire property. So if you're just now joining us, make sure that you press subscribe so you don't miss another video for this year. And if you are new to the channel, I just put together a what to plant and when series. I'll put that link in the description below of what you can plant month to month for zone nine. You can also go back and watch those videos along with what I'm planting each month to ensure that I have something growing and harvesting every month of the year. Recently, we had some pretty tough temperatures here in Central Florida. We had a few nights in a row where it got down to about 25 degrees and held for a couple hours. So I'm gonna show you what we're not doing and what we plan to do uh, waiting out this time and seeing what is actually starting to bud and what is alive and what is not alive. So I hope you guys stick around and enjoy this video. So here's our three rows of mulberry trees. These trees were all propagated from our mother tree, which I'll show you here in a little bit, but it's one of the first fruit trees we ever bought on our property and our children absolutely loved it. Of course, everyone in the family loved it and we just didn't get enough harvest to ever take inside. And of course, struggling with the birds and the squirrels. So we bought a second mulberry tree that did not do its justice for the family so i decided to take it on myself and not spend the money of buying a mulberry tree but learn how to propagate them on my own and i was very successful with them and it was probably one of the neatest things i've ever experienced in gardening is rooting a twig from a tree and creating more trees so i was really excited i'm actually really proud of these trees i was really really discouraged to see fruit on these trees too early um, we had a few weeks where it was just straight up hot weather it pushed all of our fruit trees and a lot of our sent a lot of our um, vegetable garden to seed and then we had three days of below freezing temperatures thankfully these guys are so hardy that they're already pushing new blooms and new fruit so even though we lost a lot of fruit, I still have faith that we are gonna get a really good production off these trees. So we're not trimming these back. We're just gonna let the dead stay on it because look at all of the new fruit and leaves. So thankfully those are all doing well. I do sell cuttings if anybody's interested in purchasing. I actually just added an option for purchasing a little mini food forest. You can actually choose five, cut five bundles of different varieties from our food forest and we will ship the, cut them fresh the same day and ship them to you priority mail and that only will cost you $65. So you can actually find that on my website along if you wanted to just buy individual cuttings, you can do that as well. So over here is our start to the vineyard. We actually planted bare root, I believe it was last year. And right now we are in the stages of training them just to go up to our the top of the wire. Um, we were successful on some, not so successful on others. Um, we are just waiting for some blooms to come out. This is the time of year where they lose all of their um, leaves and um, not blooms, but <laughs> buds. Anyways, these are all hardy muscadines, so they have most likely made it through the freezes that we had. So over here we have our little grove. All these trees were rescued trees. We have lost a few. Um, some are struggling. Some people have said they think that they have citrus greening. For us, we don't want to really spray our trees with anything and we're just kind of seeing how these do. We have harvested buckets of oranges off these trees and I recently have picked some to see how they did after the freeze and just to see the edges of them. It does look like we got a little bit of damage on them. Um, we did run water on our entire food forest for I think three hours 
from, I think it was four to six, um, just to create a atmosphere where possibly it wouldn't damage the um, bottom of the tree and the root system. So that is something we did. Um, we did put more um, wood ch chips on some of the trees we were worried about. I did not have the time to throw wood chips on everything. Um, thankfully, most all of our trees are pretty hardy. But um, before the freeze, we had a lot of blooms on our trees and with fruit on them, which was really weird. Um, I th really think that a few weeks of heat pushed them into thinking it was spring. So um, thankfully, we are getting new buds since that frost. Look at how pretty these are. Um, I do have a moringa tree. I don't know if I showed this in my last video, but it was just starting to go into seed and I was gonna harvest my first seed pods from this tree. And unfortunately, the freeze got these pretty bad. Um, I have heard that if we cut it back, it will possibly give us some new growth. Either way, I'm starting seeds um, for some more trees and we're just gonna see what happens to this guy. I'm not gonna cut him back yet or any of our fruit trees back. I'm gonna wait until um, probably early March when we know that our freezes are completely gone. I might even wait longer than that. Over here, I've got a olive tree. This is probably the first year we've had this tree. It's just kind of in the establishment stage. We haven't had any flowers yet, but maybe we'll have some after um, this little cold snap. I'll keep you updated on that. Over here we have a mixed variety of different citrus trees from Myers Lemon to Key Lime and some others we have no clue because they were rescued trees as well. Um, you can see that there's a lot of leaves on the ground um, from the freeze. We did get some damage on them but they look like they are all growing new growth so far. Myers Lemon. This is one of our Myers Lemon trees, which is my absolute favorite. It has been producing really well for us. I have a fig tree here, which lost all of its leaves, but I do see a little bit of green coming back up. Here's our mother mulberry tree. And as you can see, a lot of the dead leaves have fallen off, but we are getting a lot of new fruit and new leaves. Unfortunately, our papayas did not make it. Um, I probably could cut them back and see if they'll shoot a side shoot. Um, I have done that in the past and um, what's happened is the, the stalk ends up rotting through and I just, yeah, these guys. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start new seeds on these. But if you do have a papaya tree that's damaged, you can cut it off at the bottom at an angle and see if it will create some new shoots. But as fast as papayas grow from seed I'm just and produce, I'm just going to go ahead and start fresh. And I think I'm going to leave a papaya in a pot. So if we do get another freeze, we'll be prepared to bring it in. It's just absolutely impossible to go out here and cover all these trees. Um, over here we have a mango. It's a young mango. We do have some green on it and we're just going to leave it. We're just going to see what it does. I have a dragon fruit where I have yet to figure out where I'm going to plant it. It's been sitting in our backyard gar garden area. And I really want to get it planted somewhere and staked. Over here is our Barbados cherry tree. And these guys are pretty hardy. You can already see some new growth here. So this tree is, looks like it's gonna do just fine, even though it looks really bad from losing a lot of its leaves. Here's our avocado tree. This tree was started from seed from my father about seven years ago. Since, now, since then he has passed, so I'm thankful that this tree has survived. And it looks like it got a little bit of frost damage. Uh, last year was the first time it ever flowered. We did not get fruit from it, but I wonder if this cold snap will push it into flowering again and maybe we will get fruit. I'm not sure, but that tree's gonna stay whether it produces or not. 
Over here we have our guava tree. We've got two guava trees, which are smaller guava. Looks like it got hit worse. <clears throat> Over here, um, I'm not seeing any, well, yeah, there is a little bit of new growth here on it, but we're, we're not gonna cut it back or anything. We're just gonna let it do its thing. You can definitely tell there's tons of leaf damage. This is probably one of the saddest trees on our property right now that I'm mainly upset about. This is our mango. This was a transplant rescue tree as well. Last year was our first year that it ever fruited and flowered. This tree was in flowering stage right before those three days of hard freezes. And <laughs> I'm so sad because it had so many flowers on it. You guys can go back to my January tour and see how beautiful this tree was. We were gonna get a ton of fruit from it. And unfortunately, I don't know if there's enough time for this to shoot new growth and flowers to produce. So we're gonna kind of just see if it's gonna start shooting new growth and most likely after probably maybe mid-March, I'll probably come back and kind of trim a little bit off to see um, if we have any green. I don't wanna cut too much off because we might be taking away good stock and I'm just gonna leave it like that. So over here's our, what we think is a Catalina guava. That's a rescue tree also. Um, it's just a smaller guava. Both my guava trees have a pink flesh. Over here is another mango tree. It's more established. We probably had this guy for about six years and it doesn't have as much damage, but it do, you can definitely see some leaf damage. Um, this one has yet to flower. I'm hoping maybe with this cold weather, maybe it will flower for its first year. I don't know. We'll just see and we'll keep you updated with that. You can see all the leaves over here. It's so sad. Now I have a ton of pineapples here that got hit really bad. I think these guys are going to be okay. Um, there's still a lot of green in the center and I'm not going to touch them. I'm just going to see how they do and I'll give you guys an update. Um, Along this fence line, we do have wild muscadine grapes and blackberries. You can actually see a lot of the blooms. Oh, right here we go. And there's a bee right there on this one. So those are real nice because they're wild and they're free and they grow on their own. Over here is our low quat tree that definitely took a beating from the freeze. It also was already in fruiting st stage. We, we did harvest a lot of fruit from it before the freeze. But as you can see, there's already um, some new green loquats already producing. Um, any fruit that was left that was in the ripe stage definitely uh, got ruined and fell off. And the squirrels and birds have been enjoying those. But thankfully, it looks like we're going to get another um, harvest from this tree this season. Here's some more pineapples. It looks like this pineapple definitely did much better because we had, did run the water and the water was hitting that plant, but we don't have irrigation over here. So time will tell how those are doing. Over here, I've got another young mango tree. I'm hopeful that this guy will make it because we do have some green left on the leaves. So we'll definitely give you an update on that. So I'm really excited to share that we have green coming out of a lot of our banana trees here, as you can see. This means that I could go through and hack off all the dead ones, which I'm not gonna do because we have hundreds of these um, through our, this is on actually a different property than us, just kind of, actually it's like two properties from our home we live on, but as you can see, we do have plenty that are surviving. Even these smaller ones to the ground are shooting some green. So I'm so thankful that we did not lose all of them. I know I've been seeing a lot of people posting pictures on social media that are worried about their banana trees, but do not pull your banana trees and do not shove a bunch of water or fertilizer to any tree um, that is suffering from a freeze or a frost 
as you can see, let me zoom in here, these bananas. We did harvest a lot of the bananas that were almost big enough to let ripen on the counter at our home. I'm gonna give you a video or a quick photo of that. But as you can see, those um, did get some damage. Now the smart thing to do is to maybe cut those back. Um, but I'm just not gonna do that. I'm just gonna let it be because we, again, have so many and they just continue to go back here. So in our backyard garden, we have about 1,100 square feet of garden space. And around our garden space, we have lined it with blueberry bushes that produce twice a year. And again, this was in the flowering stages right before those hard freezes. And um, we did lose some flowers to damage, but thankfully you can see that there's tons of new growth, tons of new buds. Some of the flowers that did get damaged are already pushing fruit from it. So thankfully, these are all good and well. As you can see, look at all these blooms. I think this will probably be the best year we've had because of all the cold weather we've had. We also have some clumpings of sugarcane on our property. These are actually already ready to harvest. When they get that deep purple color, you can go ahead and harvest them. You can actually harvest them earlier than that. They're so sweet. They're just sweeter when they've got that more of a purple color stock on them. So here are our wild elderberry trees. We have them everywhere on our property. They just go and go and go and go. I've been prop propagating a lot of these lately and definitely have been, depending on their fruit harvest to make elderberry syrup for our family during the flu season. And um, right now they are in the flowering stages. Before the freeze, there was little bits and pieces of fruit. But as you can see, there are those pretty white flowers. I was actually reading a little bit about them the other night because someone had asked me if they're poisonous. And their seeds do contain, depending on the variety, cyanide. Though that cyanide can be cooked down when you're making your juices or pies or elderberry syrup. So it's not good if you want to eat a large amount of them raw. Now my kids will eat them raw whenever we're out and about on a golf cart ride, but they're only eating a few. So um, they're just not eating handfuls and handfuls. So it actually takes quite a bit amount of the seeds to be ingested to make it harmful to you. So if any of you guys were wondering about that, I did some little research for you. So here's our wild blueberry tree and it is looking beautiful. Look at all these blooms. Look how pretty that is. Same as this blueberry, we had, wow. <laughs> we had a lot of blooms on it before the freeze and thankfully it is pushing a whole lot more. I've never seen so many blooms on this wild blueberry. So I'm excited to see how this tree will do. And um, I'll be looking forward to making some blueberry muffins with these blueberries. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something along the way. I hope I've inspired you to maybe grow something new. I'm definitely not an expert and I am trying to grow our food forest and our farm. So if there's some techniques that you think I should look into or maybe try or things I could even do better, please don't keep those to yourself. Please send me an email. I'll put my information down below or you can find it on the website. And thank you if you've recently purchased any of the products that I use through my affiliate links, which you can find that on my website as well under my favorite products. But I wanted to thank you guys that's helping allow me to move more towards focusing on my gardening journey and sharing it with others instead of my regular business, which I definitely am slowly wanting to get out of. But I just want to thank you guys for that and make sure you hit like and subscribe so you don't miss another video. We'll talk to you soon.